Lost media is something that's endlessly fascinating to me. We have this misconception since we live in the internet era that everything is available to us with just a few searches, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Lost TV episodes, things that people remember vaguely from when they were a kid but no one else seems to remember. There are entire communities dedicated to seeking out these lost pieces of history, and sometimes they find them. The reason I love these stories so much is for two main reasons. The first is that a lot of them are fairly mundane. Shows that were created as filler for a now defunct television channel suddenly become the focus of years of research and hunting. The second is that there's always the chance that someone is just lying. Stringing everyone along in a search for something that never existed, or maybe they created the thing they're talking about and are using the story for publicity. It's no secret that a good mystery can be great for marketing. This is what I want to discuss today, with two examples of internet music related mysteries, with one being significantly more believable than the other. And Ringo John, we were just a band who made it very, very big. <laughs> It's April 1970, and after years of uncertainty, one of the biggest bands of all time officially breaks up. One month later, they released their final studio album, Let It Be, and the Beatles were no more. It can be difficult looking back on this period and understanding just how big the Beatles were, but thankfully we do have some footage from the time that accurately represents so-called Beatlemania. Even when I'm 105 and an old grandmother, I love him, and Paul McCartney if you are listening. Adrian from Brooklyn loves you with all her heart. However, the Beatles didn't simply one day break up. The years leading up to April 1970 saw the band stop touring in 1966 and appearing less and less publicly together. After this, each member goes their separate way and begins their solo career, and the Beatles would never fully return. Almost 40 years later in 2009, a website appears on the internet titled thebeatlesneverbrokeup.com. The website was written by a man going by the name James Richards, and he claimed that he had accidentally visited an alternate universe where the Beatles never broke up, but more importantly, he brought something back with him. Everyday chemistry. I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. I really love what The album, which was available for download directly from the website, was a full 11 track album supposedly released by the Beatles after they broke up in our timeline. The story is a fascinating read, and Richards goes to great lengths to describe some of the little differences between our world and the parallel world in which the Beatles never broke up. I don't need to tell you that the story on this website is fake, although some people do claim to believe it, but I don't think it was ever intended to be taken seriously. The album Everyday Chemistry is not from an alternate universe. It is essentially a mashup album. Compiled each of the Beatles' solo material into a surprisingly good album. The reason this story caught on and why I find myself so interested in it is because of the quality of the music. Some songs sample as much as five different tracks without sounding like a complete mess, and I would argue that if you showed this album to someone unfamiliar with the Fab Four's music, they could reasonably believe that it's a real album, just maybe not that it's from an alternate dimension. As people have pointed out over the years, this isn't something thrown together by some crazy person in a basement. This took a certain amount of skill and knowledge of mixing and mastering. So, put it this way, you're a huge fan of the Beatles and want to express that love. You come up with the idea of creating a mashup album of all of their solo work, but you know a few things. For one, copyright is a bitch, and the Beatles in particular are harshly protected. Secondly, Beatles fans have a huge reverence for their music, and anything seen as blasphemous can lead to huge backlash. Finally, how do you get people to listen to your pet project? The answer? Create a website with a story about an interdimensional time traveller who visits a world in which the Beatles never broke up, and anonymously release the album for free. At the end of the day, the story of everyday chemistry is so unbelievable that it can't possibly be true. Even if you believe in the concept of parallel worlds, it just doesn't make sense. And the fact that every lyric can be sourced to an existing Beatles member song is just the final nail. I don't believe the story was ever intended to be taken as real, but it did the job. And uploads of the album on YouTube have hundreds of thousands of views. The story worked, and I firmly believe that if the story wasn't there, we wouldn't be talking about it now. It's easy to understand how everyday chemistry caught on, and it's also very easy to debunk the story, but that can't necessarily be said for the next topic. Like many great mysteries, this one begins on 4chan. On the 21st of July 2016, someone posts this image to the music board, explaining that they had found it in a local Oxfam charity shop, yet no information could be found online about the band or the album. After some discussion, the album was ripped and uploaded, along with a number of images showing the back and inside of the case. 
However, there were a couple of immediate issues. For one, the music was heavily distorted, and while most of the original posters enjoyed the sound, many didn't believe it was an intentional part of the mixing. Secondly, the album contained no identifying information for who created it, other than the first names of each of the band members, supposedly Owain, Andy, Sean, and John. Finally, as a few cynical posters pointed out, there was no way to prove the album wasn't created by the OP, and despite the OP's insistence on it not being a publicity stunt, it could very well have been. As time went on, a group of people set out to discover the truth behind this mysterious band, and hopefully find an original copy of the mysterious death metal. And earlier this year, in February 2020, they did just that. Like many stories of lost media, the truth about death metal is far more mundane than the story of its discovery. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, a group of young guys in England started a band. They mostly played cover songs in pubs and saw little success, but they decided to try their hand at some original music. They recorded two EPs, Death Metal and Kicking Cars, which they only distributed to family, friends, and a few labels, although they received very little feedback. In a recent interview with Owain, Andy, and Sean, they explained that afterwards they each went their separate ways and they never really had any plans to take Panchico any further. With the discovery of the band, everything became much clearer. Even as early as the first 4chan thread, posters questioned the odd name Panchico, and whether it was a purposeful or accidental misspelling of Pachinko, the Japanese pseudo-gambling machines. The cover art was also sourced from chapter 13 of a manga titled Mint na Bokura, which ran from 1997 to 2000, corroborating the 2000 date on the original CD itself. On top of this, one of the tracks on the EP was titled Laputa, presumably a reference to the 1986 Ghibli movie Castle in the Sky. All of these facts pointed to the theory that at least one of the members of the band was a massive weeb. In that same interview from earlier, Owain states that he was the reason for all the references, as he was a bit of an otaku at the time. He explains that he wrote Laputa because he had seen Castle in the Sky on TV when he was a young child, but it was never aired again, and he had no way to prove whether it was something he had dreamed or not. But it wasn't just anime. Eyes of Ibad was a reference to the widely famous Dune novels, and Sodium Chloride references the tears and rain moment from the original Blade Runner. Everything was beginning to make sense, and with the new release of the original EP on top of the undiscovered Kicking Cars EP, this cult album could finally be heard as it was originally intended to be heard. But some people aren't convinced. As you read the story of Panchico, it's very easy to see why some people believe it to be a fake publicity stunt, because it's very easy to say it is. The Imgur post that contained the original images posted to 4chan has been deleted. The band members still only go by their first names with no identifying information, choosing to remain secretive. And the Discord search only took a matter of months to turn up results. The first thing that skeptics question is the authenticity of the distortion on the disc. People quickly attributed the sound on the CD to being disc rot, seeing as the OP found the CD in a charity shop. Disc rot can occur on CDs when exposed to the elements for too long, leading to the metallic protective layer weakening and allowing chemicals to enter the CD and contaminate it from the inside. The physical disc itself will look damaged, especially when held up to the light, and when played, the audio on the CD will become distorted if it even plays at all. This is important for two reasons. Firstly, since Death Metal was essentially an indie album, it was printed onto low-quality commercial CD discs, which are now known to have very cheap protective layers and being more prone to disc rot. The second is explaining the actual sound of the album. Once again, this is very easy to dispute by skeptics, as they can simply claim it's possible for it to be faked. And more importantly, the original post which started all this contained no picture of the disc itself. Any evidence of physical disc rot seems to be non-existent. Finally, and arguably the easiest one to understand, is that since the album's discovery, it's made its way onto Spotify and has a physical release through Bandcamp, including branded t-shirts.
The issue with any internet story is that there's always the chance it's going to be fake. We live in a time where every studio wants to have their own ARG to promote some Hollywood blockbuster, and people are much more cynical now than they've ever been. The truth about Panchico is that it is extremely easy to debunk. Even Owain states this. There is no concrete evidence, but he explains this away with the reasonable statement that he only discovered the search for their little indie project a few months ago. It seems like the more we provide, the more folks think this is all a hoax. One last thing though. This interview that I've been quoting, I have no proof that it's real. The writer offers no proof that the interview is in fact with the three band members. It's much easier to believe that something is fake rather than it being real. If you say something is fake and it turns out to be fake, then you can claim to be right. If you say something is fake and somebody offers a small piece of evidence, you can claim that to be fake too and you still haven't been proven wrong. It seems like the more we provide, the more folks think it's all a hoax. The annoying thing about death metal is that unlike with everyday chemistry, there is no real answer. It could be a real story of a piece of lost media finally being tracked down and released all these years later. Or it could be a hoax designed to market a shoegaze album. Will the answer ever truly be revealed? Unless the band comes out and offers some proof, I don't think so. But I also don't care if they do. The one thing death metal and everyday chemistry have in common is that they are both good albums. It doesn't matter whether the stories behind them are real. The end result is the same. Sure. Some people may feel duped if it does turn out to be fake, but to me that doesn't change the fact that the story is enjoyable and the music is still great. Just because Everyday Chemistry didn't come from an alternate timeline where the Beatles never broke up doesn't mean it's not a fun story, and if death metal wasn't really discovered in a charity shop 16 years after it was first produced, then I also don't really mind. What I am very happy about is that the album is here, and I can listen to it whenever I want, with or without the rock. Thanks for watching, this was a bit of a departure from my regular topics, but I wanted to start branching out my channel and diversifying a bit. I'll still be talking about games and anime, but I also want to start talking about other media that I find interesting. If you want to listen to the two albums I talked about and read up on their stories a bit more in depth, the links are all in the description. Also, thank you all for your comments on the last video, it really did mean a lot to me to see people saying such nice things. Uh, you guys are great, stay safe, and I'll see you again real soon.